Hello my friends and welcome to another video. Today we're going to be diving into the book of Colossians and I know it's like a short book but it is so full of depth and insight and gems and treasures and I want to dig through it with you guys and pull those to the surface so you could chew on these riches and treasures and I remember this one preacher once said that like i'm kind of paraphrasing but he's like oh do not go to the throne of christ and realize that there are so many riches in christ that you arrived in heaven like a pauper basically he's saying like there is so much treasures in christ let us seek them let us find them we do not want to wait to the other side of life you know we don't want to wait till we arrive in heaven to finally realize the riches of christ when we could have taken some time out of our day to search for them right here on this side of eternity so yes let's do it together guys so we're going to start in the book of colossians chapter 3. so the holy spirit taught me this yesterday um the verse that he taught me is if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. Where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Alright? So there are times in your life where the world just gets so busy, where life just gets so busy. And you'd be, maybe even you're suffering from sickness and then you're just worried and anxious about so many things. And then you just feel like you've lost your peace. You feel like you've lost your stability. But then Apostle Paul is saying here, he's like, hey, set your minds on things that are above. Seek the things that are above and so when the holy spirit reminded me of that verse i looked up and then i was like i set my mind on things that are above and i'm just thinking what is above god is above and so i was like okay i gotta think about god and the first thing i think about when i think about god is christ crucified of course like come on and then i'm just like okay I cannot move past that like that's just amazing what Jesus did on earth to reveal the fullness of God through him being crucified that is a job well done and Jesus does all things well and his job on earth was to seek and save the lost and to reveal the invisible God to that visible world and so, like Jesus says, no one has ever seen God except he who comes from God. And so Jesus is the one who came from God, sent from God to the earth to reveal the Father to those whom he chooses. And I pray today that Jesus would reveal the Father to you. All right. So yes, when you're overwhelmed with things, just think of something above. And that is God, obviously. Think about God. And then when you think about God, you think about Christ crucified, which is how God was revealed to you. Because if God was revealed to you some other way, that way is not really right. Because we were born again by the imperishable seed of God, which is the gospel. And the gospel was presented to us through Christ being crucified. He bled for our sins. He died to take away our sins. His life made atonement for us, Him being the Lamb of God that was slain to save us. And He rose again from the dead on the third day, victorious, reigning forever. This is the gospel that was preached to you, and by that gospel we stand. And so yes, when I think about God, I think about how He was revealed to me. And God was revealed to me through Christ crucified. And so, right here. And now let's continue here to the first part of Colossians. I know we kind of started in the middle, but it is such an important verse to set your minds on things above. 
And so now we go over here. So why do we set our minds on God, on Christ, who is seated at the right hand of God? If we go to Colossians chapter 1, verse 19, For in Jesus, in Him, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through Him to reconcile to Himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. See, it is so important, guys. Christ crucified is so important. He is so precious. It's so amazing. I was meditating with the Holy Spirit, and I was at work, and we were talking. I know, I don't know if you guys think it's weird or not, but I don't think it's weird. Like, even at work or at home, you'd be talking, having a conversation with God, with the Holy Spirit. And then you're like, hey, you're talking with the Holy Spirit back and forth, having a really deep conversation. And we're talking about Christ crucified. And the Holy Spirit was like, so Jesus came down to earth and he revealed God in this way. He revealed God by dying on the cross. And then this was the throne that Jesus chose on earth. He could have easily come down to earth like went up to the highest throne on earth at that time period which was caesar's throne you know the throne of rome which was like the biggest empire at that time and he could have gone up to caesar and be like caesar huff puff away and then he's like that throne is mine and then jesus could have sat down on caesar's throne immediately got the reins of rome and be like rome you're going this way now he could have gone up to the high priest. He could have gone up to the throne in Jerusalem and be like, Hey, Herod, huff, puff, away. This throne is mine now. He could have sat down there and be like, Jerusalem, you're under my rule now. But, yo, the throne that he chose to represent God's throne, you know, Jesus is the revelation of God to the world. And the throne that he chose to represent God's throne of mercy and salvation is a wooden cross. Like, do you, can, can you just, like, think about it for a moment? Like, it blows your mind. Like, the Holy Spirit and I, we're just conversing about it. About Jesus choosing to represent God's throne by using a wooden cross. He chose that, you know? This was Jesus' choice to reveal God. And this is how God chose to reveal himself. The whole Trinity, they, they planned it together, guys. And this is how they chose to reveal their beauty. Isn't that so mind-blowing? And so, yes, this is how Jesus, in Jesus, is the fullness of God. And God revealed himself through Jesus to reconcile to himself, making peace by the blood of his cross. Remember, because of disobedience, sin and death entered into God's perfect creation. God did not desire for sin and death to happen. But because of sin, death came in because sin and death is married. Disobedience, rebellion, all sorts of crazy things happen. And then God's perfect world went out of order. And then to establish order again, he was willing to bleed and die on a cross. This is the amazing God that we serve. That he was willing to give his life to those who are completely unworthy. That's so amazing. And then right here. And so you're wondering, like, why do I need to know all this? Like, why do I need to continue to learn and grow? And how about all this new stuff, you know? Like, why are we talking about Christ crucified when, you know, that was 2,000 years ago? Why are we still talking about it? And I'm just like, hey, guys. So I've, I've learned, um, this one pastor once said that the basic foundational truths, like, when they become, like, a deeper part of you, that's like that's when you know like you really grasp it 
some people be like, oh, I know Jesus died on the cross. Oh, I know he bled for me. I know he died for sin. I know he's the good shepherd. Yeah, Jesus is the light. I, I know, I know. I heard that song when I was in little Christian school. Jesus is the light. I know, I know, I know. But like, as you grow older, the more you meditate on these truths and the more they become a part of you, the more you like dig into it and dive into it. It's like an ocean, a never ending well. It's like a deep trench that you could go diving in and find treasure, new treasure all the time. New treasure all the time. So some people, when they think they get old, when they think they get bored and they could move away from these foundational truths to seek something new, then they start to get lost. They start to wander and wonder, I don't even remember what my faith is about anymore. I don't even know, remember why I'm a Christian. You start to chase after things like, oh, what do angels look like? And what do these powers do? And what is this? What is, what's in it for me? And you're just chasing after all these things. And then you forget the solid foundation with which your faith is established. You see, when you build a house, right? Okay, I'm not a carpenter, right? Jesus is the carpenter. So yeah, he's going to help me describe this. <laughs> when you build a house, you build a foundation out of like rock or a cement foundation. And then you have these metal bars, okay? that you put around the foundation and so it looks like it looks like a bunch of bars just sticking up in a square and then you take your building blocks okay and then you put it into the bars so that the blocks remain attached to the foundation not just by the modar that you put on the brick you paint the modar on the brick and you stick it on the foundation but no there are um, I think they call it rebars, where they have those metal bars that go into the building blocks to keep the blocks steady so that even if the motor gets old and plastery, the bricks would still not move because they are literally drilled into the foundation by those rebars. Okay, so yeah, I know, not much of a carpenter, but you guys could like do some research yourselves. But yeah, basically, you need to remain rooted and grounded in the foundation. These foundational truths, as in Christ crucified, the cross, the blood, these things. And then you build on top of that foundation. You see? You never lose touch of Jesus the Good Shepherd. You never lose touch of Jesus dying on the cross for me. The moment those things don't get exciting anymore, that means you're ch you're starting to build the, the tower of pizza or something. Yeah, the tower of pizza. It's starting to like lean now. Oh, and you know what happens to a tower that leans too much? It falls and crashes and great was the fall of it. But if you remain steady, like a pillar, you know a pillar stands firm and you build up upon these foundational truths and that's how you build your life how you build your ministry then you will remain steady and you will not move like david says i have set the lord always before me with him at my right hand i shall not be moved and we know david's kingdom if you read through the book of kings kings one kings two their kingdoms collapse time and time again because they have taken their eyes off god but because the, um, David, King David, chose to keep his eyes on God, his kingdom remains standing even to this day. Why? Because his kingdom, he gave it over to Jesus and Jesus now rules over David's kingdom. It, like it says right here in the Gospel of Luke, Actually, it says, um, when the angel came and told Mary, <laughs> the angel came and told Mary that Jesus will reign over the kingdom of David. And so basically what I'm trying to like say here in a nutshell is that if you want to build something 
that lasts forever, you need to have it be rooted in Jesus, who is the foundation. You need to have your kingdom, your ministry. Okay, not your kingdom, but your ministry, your life, your home, your family. You have to have it be rooted in Jesus and these foundational truths, which is how Jesus chose to represent himself. And so if we go here to Colossians 1, verse 28, Him we proclaim, Apostle Paul says, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone mature in Christ. So what do we proclaim? What I'm doing now, we're proclaiming Jesus Christ. That is who we proclaim. And so we can we cannot move past that, you know? We cannot move past Jesus because he is so huge. He is so big. <laughs> he is so big and immense. We can we just can't move past him. And so when you are having a conversation or maybe when you're preaching or ministering and you feel like you're drifting away from Jesus, like Jesus is no longer the topic then pull yourself back. Pull yourself back to Jesus. Let him be the everlasting topic. Let him be the topic of your life. Let him be the king of your heart. And how do you know if Jesus is the king of your heart? Simple. Just open your mouth, honey. That's how you know. If Jesus comes out, he's the king of your heart. If something else comes out, that is the king of your heart. So yeah, watch yourselves. Watch how you speak. Watch what you say. Like for example, my guardian angels, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, they know that, they know if Jesus is on my heart, okay? Because the moment I start talking, blah, 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 and then Holy Spirit's like, um, you're not really talking Jesus right now, so... We have a heart issue. Let me go in and deal with that issue. And I'm like, oh boy. And then I let the Holy Spirit in and he molds and shapes my heart. He washes it clean. And then Jesus shines out again. So yeah, guys, I know this video is kind of long, but I really hope it blessed you. And I really hope you pulled out some amazing things from the book of Colossians. I hope this is what you pulled out. You pulled out to seek the things that are above, which is God. Here's a recap here. You also pulled out that Jesus is the fullness of God. In Jesus is the fullness of God. And he, in God uses Jesus, moves through him to reconcile to himself all things by what? Making peace by the blood of his cross. And I hope you guys also take out that we must continue to increase in the knowledge of God. Like it says right here in Colossians 1 verse 10. To walk in a manner worthy of, worthy of God and also increasing in the knowledge of God. Which is what you're doing right here. And then also verse 28. Jesus we proclaim. Him we proclaim so that we can present everyone mature in Christ. And so, yes, I pray that you guys would read through the book yourselves and that the Holy Spirit would reveal to you some more gems and treasures from the book of Colossians. Let me pray for y'all before you go. Father God, I pray for everybody watching here. I pray, Lord, that they would be filled with the riches and the knowledge of Jesus, that they would continue to dive deep into the depths of you through the power of the holy spirit through the revelation that the holy spirit gives to them i pray that the book of colossians would become really dear to their heart as they continue to realize how important the blood of jesus is how precious the cross of christ is and how much jesus went through to give them that salvation thank you so much father god please bless them today may they continue to grow in the knowledge of you in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. See you guys later. Bye-bye.